Oh, look! Yay! We've got him! Awesome. Oh my goodness, that's excellent. Okay, let's see if we've got sound and everything. Oh, yeah, I guess it's the best I can do. <laughs> <laughs> the best is good enough. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ryan, for joining us. Uh, Hopefully you're not in a time zone that uh, is taking you up. out and everything, and now... <laughs> you got the fez going. Excellent. Love it. My plan was ruined. <laughs> uh, okay. So, uh, congratulations on the uh, release of your third, if I'm not mistaken, 5200 game. Yes, this is number three. Um, and you're one of the rare 5200 developers. Uh that loves this system and makes cartridge packed packaged cartridge games for it. So what 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 is the draw for you for the 5200? Well, I think okay. Um I, I think for me it was and I've told this story a few times and I can't seem to find an angle that actually shows up good on your stream. <laughs> I'm I'm Very good. It, it's tough can, you, can you turn it sideways? Can you turn it sideways? Might be better. There we go. I think it's the delay. I'm not, oh. um, but um, yeah, the 5200. I I grew up with a 2600 and an Intellivision, and I knew I don't know three or four people with 5200s, and I always, always thought they were so cool. I mean, it was just it's just like this rare treat for me to actually get the chance to play a 5200, and. Uh, uh, you had, um, gosh, I've forgotten his name already. Adventure Two, that guy. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, his Adventure Two for the fifty two hundred is actually the first homebrew touch I ever purchased. Oh, really? And um, when when I got my hands on that, I thought, wow, maybe I could do this. <laughs> so <laughs> that, that's kind of my stepping stone and you know, inspiration to try to learn how to actually code for this machine. Yeah. And, uh, you know, one thing led to another and, uh, you know, here we are today. <laughs> so is it a machine that you had back in the day or is it a new thing or did you have other consoles and you just loved this one the most? Um, I, I had, um, I, well, as far as Atari goes, I had a 2600 cause everybody had a yeah. 2600. Um, we had yeah. television as well and, I, I knew a few people that had them. Um, I had some relatives and, you know, some acquaintances that had the 5200s. And um, I think it was around maybe, I don't know, 2007 or so, um, I decided to start collecting old games. I decided to go get all the stuff I always wanted as a kid but never got the chance to actually own. And the 5200 was, you know, way up there on my list. So I went and right. bought one, you know, collection of games, some of the nice refurbished joysticks. And uh, and that was kind of the start of it there, you know. I just just kind of kept running and learned how to code for it, and just went on and on. So yeah. And um, maybe you could explain the uh, differences between because it shares a, a an architecture with the Atari eight bit computer systems. Maybe we can discuss a little bit about the differences between programming for the Atari eight bit and the Atari 5200. I mean, you have to take into consideration the controllers, the different type of controllers. The, the controllers are the big thing. Um, I, I will preface this by saying that I've never actually programmed for the 8-bits. So this is yeah. what I know just from research and you know the you know the work that I've done. The controllers are to get big, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, um, some of the support chips are mapped to different locations, but that's not a big deal. Press the second button. There are a few things that slightly different functions on the 5200. Yeah. For the most part, they're very close to each other. In fact, the game you're you're playing right now was ported to the uh, to the line. Okay. Very very quickly after I released it. I don't, I'm not sure how long that took. Mm -hmm. I did not do the port myself. Someone else did. In fact, all of my games have been ported to the to the 8 bits. <laughs> it's I, I i wouldn't go as far as to say it's a trivial matter to do the port but it's definitely not a huge ordeal right because I, I know a, n a number of games have been ported either one way or the other 
and and I guess you just have to know the different quirks of each system, but the underlying code and the basics of it are 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 the same. Yeah, and I I think it probably helps if you uh, you know write the system you first with that in mind, you know, down the road. Um, yeah, like I I release the code to all of my games, so it makes it easier to port them. And I know yeah. this specifically was designed for trackball. So I, right. I, I made sure. And I apologize for not playing with the trackball today. Right. I thought it was just one step too far for me to try and set up. Well, uh, my, my concern all this. With, the, with the Genesis pad is that even without the trackball, this game still uses the analog on the sticks. So your movement's going to yes. be really crazy because it's always the, the maximum value on the analog stick. True. Uh, yeah. But. Uh, like when I wrote the game, I tried to make sure I kept all that input code isolated, so that if someone did do an 8-bit port, they could just replace that chunk with whatever. Ah, uh, and everything yeah, should very pretty much work. And I've actually never spoken to the guy who keeps porting my games. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to do that sometime, just to know, like, am I making this easy for you, or is it <laughs> do or anything like that? Oh, that's funny. But uh, he he seems to be doing an okay job, so. <laughs> he hasn't complained so far yet. No. Hey? <laughs> um, so you've made quite a daring move developing a trackball game for the 5200, which is probably quite a rare combination for most retro players out there. Um, the trackball, although the trackball is an excellent choice yeah. for this type of game. I mean, it's the obvious choice almost. Um, what was your uh, initial motivations for making uh, Magical Fairy Force? Um, well, this uh, I have this thing that happens to me where I end up playing some game a lot, and then I think, nobody makes games like this anymore. I should do it. So, uh, yes. I went for a period of time where I was want a game called Star Sprites, which is a Neo Geo arcade game from, I don't know, 1996, thereabouts. And it was yeah. a very similar concept to this. You had this screen that was divided into two, and you had two players, one on each side, and you just flew around and shot things. Yeah. If you shot things good, it would make all this chaos occur on your opponent's screen, and you're <laughs> you know, trying to survive and defeat them. And it was just this cutesy, fun little game that I was just playing the crap out of for some reason. Yeah. I So I started thinking, could I do something like that on the 5200? And I also wanted to track the game. And then it occurred to me that those might be the same thing. So yeah. those two things together and, uh, you know, see what comes out of it. And uh, it's thing about this game is that it actually supports two trackballs. Which, oh, my God. Wow. So you can do it somewhere if you have two of them, uh, which you do, fortunately, so I can test it. Uh, you can do, uh, both players can use a trackball, and I, I'm not aware, there are very few games that do that. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, Zari Arena is one that definitely does. Maybe a couple of the sports games do, I think. The, the trackball support seemed pretty common for the sports games. Uh, yeah. Other than that, I don't think any of them, any of the other ones actually do. Yeah. And it's a very unusual game where you don't directly fight the opponent. It, it's it's like a, a softer fighting game. It's 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 kind of like the those uh, Tetris games where you are playing head to head, but you're not directly playing head to head. Yeah. Things you do influence their side of the board, and it's very uh, very interesting. Yeah, and that's that's the way I've described the uh, the game that inspired it. is is very much like those sorts of games where you're you're indirectly trying to. You know, to and mm. like the the game that it's largely based on it was incredibly chaotic, and there's no way I was going to make this work on a 5200. It barely right. ran on a Neo Geo, to be honest. <laughs> and, uh, so I, you know, things did get quite a bit tamer, um, but I did pull off some tricks just to get a lot of objects, um, some scrolling tricks and things like that. Surprisingly, it ended up working out. Uh, mm. But uh, unfortunately, I, I kind of ran out of space. <laughs> oh, okay. I, yeah, there's a lot of characters in this game, like a lot of amazing. huge graphics and um, uh, a nice variety of people you can choose from to, to fight against. And they, they each have their own uh, set of weapons and skill sets. Uh, yeah, it, it provides a lot of variety. And 
like fighting games of that era, you progress through the different enemies as, yeah. as you make your way through the game. Uh, and you're actually porting this to the PC now yeah, there's, as well. That's my that's my real project now because um, you know 5200 games don't pay the bills. Uh, so <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure Albert will back me up on that. Um, we're got a, a PC version of this that is just it, everything but more. You know. Um, yeah. In fact, I I actually just. Uh, yesterday morning, I posted about a 30 minute video on YouTube that went through a bunch of the, the what the PC version looks like right now um, and a bunch of discussion of the characters and, and things like that. So that was kind of. Yeah, you. Yeah, I saw. I, I watched that video and there's a lot of uh, dialogue and backstory and, and each person talks with each person differently. Yeah. And, uh, it was very interesting. Yeah. In fact, the manual for this game is kind of like, I don't know, book one, I guess. Um, <laughs> because I, I'm, I'm taking these this setting and these characters. I've got plans for a whole bunch of stuff I'm going to do with them. So, um, okay. Just about everything in that manual is, you know, holds true for the next iteration. Yeah. So that's kind of like the base of the canon, I guess. Yeah. Is, is there anyone else besides you developing uh, homebrew games for the 5200? That depends on where your definition of homebrew falls. Yeah. Um, non, I, I, well, this is the 5200. This is more of an homage. This isn't really a port, really, is it? Well, it's more of an homage to other games. It, it, yeah, it's it's an original game, but, you know, it's, yeah. it takes a lot of inspiration from other things. But um, it says a 5200 homebrew is really complicated. You have. Um, original stuff like I do specifically for the system. Then you've got things like the mask types and then we got released and weird stuff like Tempest that would work down and then the guy finished it in like, I don't know, 2012 or something. Yeah. You call the conversions from the 8 bit. And so it just depends on where you draw the line on what is homebrew and what is not. True. And I, I was thinking more like original IP creations that kind of like what you do, like with Rat Catcher or the, the Olympic curling. <laughs> you really like the obscure stuff. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> like like curling on the 5200 is like a subset of a subgenre, like the, the Venn diagram of, of curling enthusiasts who have the 5200. Oh my God! <laughs> you live in Canada, you you know. That's true. Yeah, yeah that's very true. I, 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 I'm sure there'll be some here. Well, I, I'm from uh, the Buffalo, New York area originally, which okay. is so close to Canada that you spend a lot of time watching Canadian TV. So exactly, I, I've been watching curling since you know the early mid '80s. <laughs> it was no big deal for me to do it. I I was actually in a curling league for a while, so I you know I knew how it worked, and that seemed like a fun thing to do. Uh, yeah. It also let me use all four controller ports on the 5200, which oh, is, yeah. is something that I, I, it's another reason why I wanted to do the trackball is because I, I, I like trying to take advantage of the 5200 in the ways that it is yeah. strong. And yeah. the, the four controller ports just don't get used very often. No, it's a fairly unique thing in uh, video game consoles to have four ports. There's like the Dreamcast and the 5200, uh, the GameCube, um, not not too many more. Mostly are two two ports, or if you're extremely unlucky, uh, you get one port <laughs> with uh, uh, the uh, turbo graphics. Uh, yeah, the turbo graphic. That's what I was trying to think of. Yeah, I think some of the, yeah, think some of the 3DO models. If I remember right, you you actually daisy chain the controllers on that system. I think. Oh, oh God, what a terrible idea. <laughs> but I guess if you're sitting right beside the person, it kind of makes sense. But. Um... Um, like Rat Rat Catcher was a three player game. It had a three player mode. Uh, Curling had a uh, four player, actually an eight player mode. If you wow. controllers, uh, wow. Th this one only does two, but it does the trackball. And then my new game is coming out soon. Uh, it has a four player mode as well. Oh, that leads my made my next question. Yes, no. uh, what maybe, can you talk about your next game? I know you're concentrated on the PC version of this right now but uh, how far along are you in the next one um well you know what i was actually working on it um during the i don't know 13 hours or whatever i've been sitting here waiting for this call 
<laughs> I apologize profusely for that. Um, I, I, I should have foreseen that it would go on over, but I was like, it's oh, okay. there'll be a 10 minute variation in the times. Don't worry. Like, oh, sure, yeah. sure, sure. 10 minutes. Uh, don't worry about <laughs> I'm in your time zone. I'm, I'm oh, okay. down in Seattle, so. Oh, perfect. You're a three hour drive from us. Yeah, not that far. Um, but I was actually working on it while I was waiting to come on here, and I was hoping I could finish it. So I just come on and say, oh, I just finished. <laughs> I just released the binary and the source code on, on the forums. Um, it's very close to being done. What I'm what I'm doing is I'm porting uh, the Intellivision game Tron Deadly Discs to the 5200. Mm. Oh, yes, that's right. Oh my God, that, that looks really, really fun. Oh, thank you. And um, I put a, a, a battle mode in it where you can have four players run around and, you know, Oh, that's that's awesome. Death for you with each other. Um, and that's very, very close to being done. I have a few seven things I need to resolve. Um, like I said, there's a chance it would have been done right now. Uh, <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah. I forget. I forgot that that you were the one who's making that, that Tron game. It looks it looks amazing. I, I'm surprised the amount of, of attention it has attracted. Um, and it, yeah. it, it kind of goes back to something. I know when you were doing your award show, you brought yeah. up the reason that you wanted to split ports from original games. Exactly. Yeah. This is the first port that I've done. And mm. it's all over the place. It's like, wow, we want to play this because <laughs> you kind of have this built-in fan base. Yeah, it's, it's, exactly. A game like that, which a lot of people think is, if not the best, one of the best games on the television. And, it's... Uh, it's really really fun i mean you can see the appeal it's got the ip built into it um you it's just a fun game too i remember playing that on the intellivision and, and having that game I, I wish that kind of game would be get, gets ported to a bunch of systems actually. well i mean you know, there's always the, the ip issues and all that but um with, well I, that's yeah pointed in my version um but uh yeah that, that's a fun yeah. project and that's going to be done very soon and oh great then you know, then you move on to something else which you know, something else oh great yeah somebody said ah disney barely acknowledges that tron exists i don't know about no, that they, they don't made some pretty recent movies yeah <laughs> a lot of, a lot of companies don't care it's only the big end that really really cares yeah and that's the weird thing i've, I've occasionally thought about branching out to some different systems and i need yeah. to try doing something on the 7800 Oh, great. But every time I try to think of a 7800 game, I think of some Nintendo port. I don't know why. It's just all I can think of. I've got like, right. three games in mind. I think, boy, it'd be cool to do those on the 7800, but they're all <laughs> arcade games. Like, uh... I, I think because it's in the same, same generation as the Nintendo, and there's so many Nintendo games, I think yeah. the mind generally drifts towards that level of capability of the system yeah i think i look at you know like how you got the donkey kong and the mario brothers and donkey kong jr it's like well where's donkey kong 3. yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly that. um yeah nobody likes lots of holes to fill in but i can do it yeah it'd be it's it's worth a go i mean i i'm not i don't i rarely put that game in because it's like uh it's so annoying hopping around this gap in the level that's that's the part and it's just it just seemingly it's just repetitive yeah. it's like yeah get him to the top and you're done yeah it, it seemed like it'd be a fun 7800 game but yeah yep. let's see um yeah i said my focus right now is on the pc stuff um the yep. pc version of this which i'm very excited about um, yeah and what are the controller options uh because you you did rollerball for the for the uh, 5200 what kind of inputs do you have on the PC version of it? Um, uh, you got pretty much anything you can think of for the mo. Eh, well, there's no trackball, so the 50 yeah. does have the advantage on that. That's true. But you've got the analog uh, controller, I'm guessing. Yeah, the analog yeah. controller is the digital pads, uh, keyboard. I thought about mouse control for about five minutes yep. and then said, <laughs> but that was on the table very briefly. Oh, okay. Oh, somebody's suggesting real sports equestrian dressage. Oh, if you equestrian. Want to... <laughs> I how many sports suggestions I keep getting because it, <laughs> nobody homebrews sports games. <laughs> That's yeah. Yeah, I mean it's pretty. It's fairly rare. I mean, uh, uh, 
Champ Games is going to be starting to do those, but it's, it's, it's there, you know, there's a smattering of them. Yeah, it's, it's uh, you don't do and um, it's probably because the AI is difficult, and a lot of people don't make two-player games. Um, so there's those barriers. In, yeah. in, EA Smith, uh, Edward Smith, does make a lot of sports games, so he's he he's got a lot on the twenty six hundred. Yeah, that's oh that's for God. sure. Writing curling AI, that was an adventure. <laughs> yeah. Oh well, there's polo. There was a polo for the twenty six hundred. Wow, okay, I didn't know that's that. That's interesting. Water polo or polo polo? Yes. I've never even heard of that. Wow. Wait a minute. You know, was was that an actual polo or was that just a Sears game that they polo? Oh, is it? It's like a rebranded. Yeah, yeah sure. Their polo. It's polo. No. <laughs> um, what? Yeah. It, um, yep. Because, I mean, yeah, I, I spent two years coding this thing, so I don't really care about it anymore. Uh, I'm interested in the manual. <laughs> okay. um, how did the manual turn out? Oh. Oh. Uh, well, if you're able to look, uh, I guess there. It looks great. It's nice, glossy. It's a beautiful gray uh, color. I don't know if you can see it from there on the webcam. Uh, I'll hold it up because I don't think you're watching the stream, right? Because you're on a phone? Uh, I, guess I do on. have it on in the background. Okay, I'll hold it up to the camera and switch over to that so you can see it. Um, one second. There we go. So just beautiful front artwork there uh, with all the uh, cartoonish characters you've got in the game. Uh, oh, that's great. Let Thanks. me sw flip over to... Oh, this one's probably the best page to put it on. Where you've got the intro to it. All the characters there again. Uh, and all the different okay. pages. That was, that was really, I've never seen that page in the proofs. Oh, <laughs> so that's the first time. There you go. And here's another page with... Uh, Zorex and uh, 7ZCBX. I, I, this was the biggest 5200 manual Albert's ever printed, which kind of... <laughs> it, I, I expected oh. Adventure 2 would be bigger. Yeah, so when I picked up the box, I was like, oh my god, this is heavy. So it's the combination of the cartridge and the hefty manual that comes with it. So uh, you'd be well prepared for the game once you uh, once you read the manual. Yeah, that's, that's for sure. Um, I, I worked with an artist named uh, Lou Graziani who has done all the character art for this game. Mm. Oh, great. Some of a little, some of the in-game stuff too. Um, anything directly character related in the game was done by him. And he did a really good job. Of it, but, uh, you know, it, it was a lot of work to keep some of it, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> uh, oh, wow. The, um, those nice character portraits you mentioned before. I remember yep. initially those portraits took up a quarter of the cartridge space. Oh yeah, they're really, really nice because they're massive. They're really big. And I, I ended up compressing them at some point. I don't remember how much space I got back from that, but um, yeah, I, this, this one really pushed the edge of thirty two for me. And, mm, uh, yep. I'm. Um, I mean, the 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 Tron game, uh, IntelliDisc, that that's easily fits into thirty two K, and my next game will also easily fit into thirty two K. After that, I'm gonna start investigating some larger cartridges. Um, Albert says he has a 512k cartridge, which sounds like Phew. it's just gonna be ridiculous. Wow, you can put some uh, real-time audio in there, right. like just tons and tons of space. Full motion video. Exactly. Yes, first full motion video 5200 game. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm definitely very excited to try something up with a larger cartridge. Um, in fact, I do have an idea for another 5200 game with this same set of characters, which. Yeah. Is oh, great. Plus the new ones that we're going to add to the PC game, so it's going to be something. Okay. But it, yeah, so you'll you'll be able to draw from from your uh, new uh, new characters in the game and add them into later games. Yeah. Continue on with them. Yeah. So well, it's going to be a fun ride, I hope. Excellent. So uh, before I let you go, anything else you want to uh, say about your game or upcoming games or uh, thanks to people and. Um. Well. Wow. Well, uh, thanks for having me on. It's very. Uh, especially going to the trouble of uh, you know finding a 5200 and... <laughs> well i have three of them uh, the first one i plugged in the first port doesn't work oh. um, but the second one i plugged in it's good to go what 
I just out of curiosity, what what sort of adapters are you running through to use a Genesis controller on it? Uh, it is. Uh, I will show you actually because I don't know the brand of it. Um, so I'm gonna unplug me from audio, so I won't be able to hear you for a second. Right. Uh, so it's a black box with two knobs on the front, uh, and it's got all the buttons. So you're able to. Uh, uh, tune it in, I guess, to center uh, the controllers, the analog controllers, so they output digitally and you're not pressing to the left or right all the time. Yeah, so uh, that's what it is. I bought it a number of years ago, and so I can't remember who um, who sells it. I had some other um, some other adapters as well. Those did work, but they didn't they didn't have the I would have had to use the controllers in conjunction with them because they had a pass through. Okay. Yeah. And none of my controllers worked. So, uh, those didn't work. So this is all in one. You don't need a controller, a uh, 5,200 controller with this. one. <laughs> my, this is all I could manage for endings. It was just a, a paragraph of text. It was all I had space left for. Oh, excellent. Did you win? Yes. Oh, oh my Kitty. God. That's awesome. Kitty won. <laughs> Kitty Have, is out there. Having turned on Kavasha, Zavasha, nothing is left to restrain the brutal power of Kitty. Rawr. 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 <laughs> <laughs> the news of Zavasha's downfall brings scant comfort to the citizens of Fairyland. <laughs> they know that Kitty is out there <laughs> waiting and, and hungry. hungry. Well, there we can we attest to that. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Great stuff. All right. So thanks so much uh, for uh, being on the show. Yeah, sorry for and... getting the connection going there. Oh, we got it in the end. I was about to give up, but you, you powered through it. Yeah. So thanks yeah. so much. I've been waiting a long time. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, and I apologize for that as well. That but thanks for hanging in there. Quarter after seven is fine. Ah, so <laughs> you had nothing better to do, it's, right? Yes, yeah, time for the mirror. <laughs> oh, wow. So we're good. Oh, there you go. Okay, so thanks so much, oh, no. and uh, have a great evening, and congratulations on your third uh, release. Right, thank you. Enjoy the game. You bet. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. That is uh, awesome, and congratulations, <laughs> Tanya, for beating it with Kitty. Well, yeah. On, they, the, on the easy level, I guess. Yeah, and yeah. with continues. I mean, I didn't oh, go through it completely. Okay. Yeah. You, you continue and go back to playing the same person so that's true uh, so yeah. it's not it's not too hard to get to the end but there are a bunch of characters so i just played with one with kitty with one character yeah. so and thank Very you exciting. al for letting me know that his audio was loud i think it was from the interview before where that audio was a bit a bit quiet, quiet. you're adjusting yeah. constantly right um so we've got two, two segments left we're going to go on to the jaguar discussion oh my uh next uh there's no more call-ins, actually. Oh, well, that's because, because probably I, easier. Yeah, yeah, because I wanted to put the non-call-ins at the end um, because I didn't want to keep anybody up too late in case it did drag on a bit. Um, but we still have one more giveaway uh, we do? Oh, uh, yes, to we do. do. Um, we'll do another cartridge one. Did you bring up some cartridges? Uh, um, yes, I did. Okay. They're over here. So we'll do that uh, after this. And that will be the final one? Yeah. Or? Okay. So we have uh, four Jaguar games that are released. Uh, oh, did I miss somebody? You might have. Uh oh, am I in trouble? <laughs> did you miss someone? Did you skip? Oh no 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 no! There's three three more things to do. That's why I was like looking over yeah, the door. Oh my God, Hugo Hunt. Yes. But that's pre-recorded. That's pre-recorded. Okay. Yeah. But, so it's still not a call-in. Uh, oh, it's just all merged into here. So we have, uh, there's two more 2600 games. Yes. Hugo Hunt and then Ninja Sky in Low Res World. Ooh, exciting. Yes. But first up, we have uh, four Jaguar games. So let's bring the ball out first. And we'll switch over to the webcam when you've got those ready. Put this back. Put this on the 
ground so we have room. No, I don't want those. Just want that one. This Jaguars. One. Jaguar Sorry, games. These ones. Jaguar. Oh, they're heavy. I just grabbed the wrong ones. Oh, they're heavy. A little extra thing. There is the manual. For, oh, okay. For that one. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Good. so for uh, Jaguar, what we're going to do is uh, look at one box, mm -hmm. and because I don't have a Jaguar, <laughs> we can't play them, but we have gameplay Good. footage Good. Um, from the Atari Age trailers um, that we'll be able to do. Mm -hmm. And then we'll go and, uh, because I asked a bunch of questions to the Jaguar developers, uh, we're going to, I'm going to read off some of the Jaguar developer Their answers? answers and then awesome. go to the next game and back and forth like that. Okay. Sounds good. Um, so, uh, which one should we do first? Let's do the one that's not in the box first. Yes. Uh, it is brawn and brains. So here, let's switch over. Boom. Brawn and Brains. Can we be able to hold that? Oh, there we go. Perfect. Brawn and Brains. And, oh, he's got special stickers for the Jaguar carts. Yeah, they all have Atari Age, and the Jaguar ones have Jaguar stickers. Oh, so. very nice. I kept all the plastic bags. <laughs> There's a lot On of plastic bags over just there. Just in case you want to actually put them back in. We also so. have a plethora of stickers. Oh, God, he did send Atari H stickers. Oh, a lot of Atari H stickers. <laughs> I told Al that uh, you don't need to send Atari H stickers. You can use them like confetti. Well, just like throw them there. Um, because I have I, I have a big, big bag of Atari H stickers, and I will add them to the bag. <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank you, Al. <laughs> um, so this is uh, Brawn and Brains. And uh, let me just read. It is a compilation cartridge mm. of one, two, three, three games. Am I skipping pages? Uh, Dragon Keep, uh, Tiles, uh, and uh, Do the Same. And uh, Dragon Keep is... Doesn't have an explanation here. So it looks like an awesome shooter because um, I haven't played it. Uh, oh no, it's uh, it's a port of uh, oh an Atari game in television game made by Magic, I believe Dragon Dragon something. More Dragon games. Yeah. Um, there it is, and we're gonna take a look at Dragon then, Fire. Dragon Fire. That's it. I was like Dragon Dragon Dragon. Yep. And uh, tiles is a puzzle game, mm. matching tiles. Nice. Every system needs a, a tile pu matching a tile game. Matching game. Uh, and do the same looks like a um, uh, Simon type of game. Uh, are you fast enough? Do the same is a game of speed and reflection. We're featuring 112 levels across three levels of difficulty. Do the same offers plenty of. The faster you are, the more points you receive. But we will see some gameplay so that we are more knowledgeable mm. about these systems. And I've got these loaded in. This should work. Uh, brawn and bra brains. And here is...
Boom! Fire in your face. <laughs> Great trailer. Very dramatic. <laughs> yes. Um, so I uh, was messaging with uh, Serrano J and Sporadic, uh, Lawrence Stavely and Rick Day, mm -hmm. and asked them questions about their releases mm -hmm. and their work on the Jaguar. Um, so let's... Let's see, I said, thanks so much for being a part of the Atari Age Day and uh, to talk about the Atari, Atari Jaguar homebrew scene and all your new Atari Jaguar releases. Um, so my first question was, what is your background in game programming and each of your roles in the new Atari Age releases? Serrano J said, aside from a stint uh, working for uh, Sinister Developments, actually, just one sec. Uh, working for Sinister Developments in the 90s on the unreleased Slam Racer Jaguar game, none. I dug the dev kit out again in t around 2008 and started playing around, and here we are. So he's an old school Jaguar programmer. Um, uh, what he worked on in each of the games, he was the coder for Rebooted, the coder and designer for Last Strike, uh, the bio on, on Biopede, uh, he was the menu coder uh, in the compilation Brawn. Uh, and on Xenon 2, he ported the game from the Atari ST. And uh, Sporadic, Sporadic's answer uh, about what your background is and your roles in these games. Uh, I've always tinkered around with making games, etc. on various platforms since I was young. These were all prototypes and things I'd create for fun by myself. I released a couple of things on, an on the Android store many years ago, including 3D Space Invaders Adaption. Uh, the Jaguar has always been close to me, and back in 2015, I started looking into options for developing games on it. I was all geared up to start a learning assembler, expecting quite a journey to getting something on the screen. It was at that time I discovered Raptor Basic Plus on the Atari Age forums. This was a game changer. I jumped right in and started making stuff straight away. This eventually led to the creation and release of Astro Storm, published by Atari Age. Now then, uh, since then, I've created tiles on the Brawn and Brain compilation, and I'm still working on two other games, Nitrous and Crumbs. I usually have other prototypes on the go uh, in the background too, but I don't like to show these until there's something more concrete in place. That's a general trend. Mm -hmm. It's like, have something to show that people can possibly play that's yeah. fairly complete. Uh, Tiles on the Brawn and Brains compilation is a relaxing puzzle game where you have to fill uh, the grid to end on a single color. The idea was to be calm, relaxing, <laughs> lots of relaxing in here, and to not push the player too much. Yeah. I used the development of this game to get back into the Jaguar program, into Jaguar programming. I had not been into it for a while and need to, need some, needed something fresh to work on. Um, so we're going to go on to the next unboxing of the game, mm -hmm. of the Jaguar games. If you want to package these back up. Do you have the plastic? Did you uh, I don't out? have... Oh. oh, yeah, yeah, I do. There you go. Sorry. Back in there. Uh, we will do uh, Rebooted next. So here is gorgeous... Uh, cover art for rebooted um, and this has one two three four five six seven and more games in it another compilation awesome. so i got two boxes for, for rebooted. rebooted bonus box with i assume an identical manual oh we've got two manuals so I don't think there's anything different between them. So I think that was just Al. But I just mention it in case I'm oh, missing something. But I, I, they I look to be the it. same. They look to be the same. He probably just accidentally packaged. Which is them. fine. I just... Um, so great looking artwork on the cartridge again. Uh, and the manual is a replicate of the box art mm -hmm. as well. Very nice, yeah. The more explosions. Oh, that was not intentional, Al said. So. Okay, that's Bona fine. I bonus just, box. They look to be exactly the same, so I assume they are. He's under a lot of pressure. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, we've got two manuals. Um, we can never have enough manuals. And there's some awesome postcards. Oh, yes. It came with a bunch of extra Like stuff. actual postcards. Atari Age postcards for the game. Um, I'll show a couple of them. 
I don't want to show all of them because uh, I want to leave some fun for the people who are going to buy this. There we go. There, I showed, showed three of them. Lovely. That's yeah. very, very nice. Um, and you've got nice uh, Jaguar art here. Uh, slashes down the back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Whoa. Very, very nice. Yeah. Um, and a uh, fairly extensive manual because there's a lot of games in here. Mm. Uh, thank you for uh, purchasing the rebooted collection and continuing to support the homebrew scene and the J Atari Jaguar. The games featured in this multi-pack have all been given an update with new graphics, music, and other additions such as pro controller support and cartridge saves. Some of these titles have previously never been, had a physical release, mm. while others, others were only available on Jaguar CD or in extremely limited runs due to production costs. And of note, one of these games is... One second, if I can get the page open. Uh, Downfall, which we have been uh, playing a little bit, and we played last show. This is a port of... Uh, what is the game? Is it Downfall? Falling Down? Man Goes Down. Oh, is it? A part Mango's of Mangoes down. down? Yes. Mango. Mangoes down. That's it. Yep. Uh, and he, they call it Downfall. So I'm not sure if Mangoes down is original or it's that's a port as well. I think it, I it's a port of something, it. if I recall, but I yep. don't recall what it was. A port Mangoes of. down. Thank you. Al. Yeah. So now we're going to take a look at the trailer uh, for uh, Rebooted. Hopefully it does not blast your ears. I am going to try and turn it down as quickly as I can, but I can't. I don't have access to the volume controls till I switch over to it. So maybe just take a slight step back from your <laughs> speakers, your speakers. <laughs> and herd all the cats out of the room. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to turn down as, as quick as I can. So here is the Atari Age trailer.
I recognize a lot of those games. Mm -hmm. uh, not just Man Goes Down, but there's like a Sea Quest in there. Um, there is something like Time Pilot, it looks like, the Kobayashi Maru Redux. Very Time Pilot y. Mm. Um, Rocketeer Rebooted, I, I swear I've seen that game. I think you have to collect fuel to take off in your ship and okay. avoid things. Um, obviously, Expressway. Yes. Is freeway. freeway. A super, <laughs> super fun game. Yep. And Rocks Off again is a classic turning things on and off. You click mm -hmm. something, everything around it turns on and off. Yeah. I like those I find that games. game hard. Those are hard games. I, they're fun, but they're hard. That one's super, super yeah. hard. So, it, like somebody said in the chat, this one would be a very good one to start with mm. if you're going to buy uh, a first homebrew for Jaguar because you've got such a selection of very classic games that you're going to like probably the majority of them. Mm. Yeah, so that... Uh, looks really, really cool. Um, so the next question, uh, tell me a little bit about Reboot and which games fall under the Reboot label. Serrano J uh, says, uh, Rebooted, uh, Last Strike, or Reboot. Brawn and Brains is Reboot, uh, uh, Dragon Keep, uh, Sporadic Soft for Tiles, uh, RGCD uh, for Do the Same, but it's really an Atari Age release. And Xenon 2 was originally a Pleiades release and now Atari Age. Um, and he says, Reboot is a group of people coming together to release things for the Jaguar scene. My role is to write Jaguar co code, but mainly is to have fun while contributing to the Jaguar community. Mm. Uh, so it's a loose collective that fall under yeah. a title. Um, I keep doing this as long as it's fun and people enjoy the releases. And I mean, really, that's the... That's kind the of the, the, yeah. <laughs> the, the motto for pretty much everybody that develops or is involved in the community. Of homebrew, it's like yeah. of homebrew. It's like we're gonna keep doing it as long as it's fun. Yeah. And you know, I try and I, I like doing this, this show. Yeah. And you know, I would I wouldn't do it if it was fun. And I try and do these things because to well, keep that fun. It. Yeah. And yeah. and to keep that fun going. Yeah. Right. Um uh, did I staple these out of order? Uh, nope. Nope. Okay, good. Uh, I should probably do one more question before we get to the next game. Mm -hmm. uh, question. Uh, Last Strike was first announced in the Atari Age forums in 2017. And That's now this it's. One. Yeah. Uh, so I might show that one next. Uh, no, show it last. Oh, yeah. Okay. No, there's something extra in there. Oh, okay, we'll do that last. Yeah, do it last. And now it's being shipped in 2021. Can you tell me a little bit about the typical timeline for creating uh, games of the scope of Last Strike? Because mm. um, it looks like a great shooter. Mm. Uh, it is It is different for each game. It's kind of an, a, a general question because that's, that's difficult to say, mm. right? Uh, mostly things start out as smaller mini game and then sometimes they grow way beyond the scope and take much longer. That is what happened with Rebooteroids, again, with Last Strike, and it's happened again, yet again with our current progress games, Gravatic Mines. Last Strike has pretty much been completed for over a year, but due to COVID, it got pushed back, and uh, we all uh, got held back in everything we've done pretty because much. of the because of 2020? 2020. 2020. Um, and some of 2021. And some of 2021. First quarter. Uh, that additional First time allowed... Uh, more shakedown playtesting to happen, which has resulted in a better final result for everyone to hopefully enjoy. Personally, I prefer working on the smaller mini games, and I'd like to make a few more of these, uh, possibly release them as compilations. And I, I love these compilations. Um, I've loved the like the Atari Age compilations as well, with the well, multi mini games. Well crafted mini games, hours of play because they're yeah. simple, but you get hooked into them and you just want to keep playing them and, so, and you don't have the, like the possible uh, hesitancy of picking up a big game yeah where, where it's you like, feel oh, like you I have to... to devote time to understand the story and yeah. the narrative and yeah. and the gameplay is more complex so you have to kind of figure out the details of it so mini games are fun that way you can just pick up and play them and, yeah yeah um and sporadic said all games will vary depending on their complexity that will be coding, asset creation, and level design, not to mention all the things you don't think about it until it's required, such as manuals and boxes. Mm. And, you know, I know about that from making movies yet again. 
It's like, oh, I've made the movie. Wait, there's way more work. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now you have to market it, and you have to make trailers, and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And you have to advertise, advertise it, and get it, people interested in it. Distribute it. it and distribute all of this. It. The more the complex a game is, the longer it needs to be tested. I've been working on Nitra since late 2015, and it's totally evolved from what it was. On the flip side, I created tiles in just under two weeks from wow. start to finish. Nice. Some of the other developers have said this too. I like making mini games. They're fast. I get the satisfaction. I mm -hmm. get the feedback immediately. Mm -hmm. um, yes, it's not an overly complicated game, but the turnaround time would have been much higher without all the great tools that have been released in the past few years. Um, so we're going to go on to the next game. Xenon 2. Mega Blast. So let's take a look at the packaging on this one. And a very... The very, I don't know what kind of style this is. You know is. what? It has this bright, colorful look. And I might... Like glitch style. It's like... I, yeah, yeah. I've seen uh, artwork Exaggerated like this before. brightness. Yeah. And, um, Oversaturation. You know what's really interesting is I work... I'm, I'm a biologist and we deal a lot with pictures of fluorescent things mm. like like cells and that kind of thing oh. and it reminds me of that because you have these really exaggerated fluorescent colors and it's very biological in a way like it's it's really cool yeah. i really like it i really like it oh yeah i love that and color. there's They're a very 90s style you know those glowing shirts that people had in the 90s yeah. everything was is day glow yeah everything I or like heat activated. Yes. And it kind of fits heat into that. Activated. Yeah. <laughs> that, that that was a great idea. That aesthetic. Yeah. yeah that, that went away. <laughs> the the hypercolor like, oh. shirts. Hypercolor. Yes. So oh, you're, it's like your pits if are. If you're a woman, yeah, your pits and your boobs or whatever. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Anyway, not, not the greatest concept, but. Yeah. Someone made money off of it. So here's the uh, cartridge sealed again with a Jaguar sticker. I love the. Extra little, ooh, look at this. Cartridge. Love the red. Mm -hmm. And you've got the... Um, the clear red, yeah. Yeah. It's beautiful. Very, very nice. And the manual is the same. It's got the great artwork on the front. Slash. Gorgeous. Um, oh, great artwork inside, actually. It shows all the uh, elements of the game. Let's get that not shiny. There we go. Beautiful artwork. Love the shoot 'em up, so this could be up my alley. Yeah, I love shoot 'em ups. Um, and uh, in this era as well. There's a picture of the game. See anything else in here? Ooh, oh my god. The Nautilus shellfish. Ooh, Just look at, look at this huge boss. Oh, oh my look God. at that. That is That's gorgeous. That's gorgeous, yeah. So we're going to see some of the uh, gameplay in the trailer now. So hopefully we'll, they'll show off that boss because that is just amazing. Here we go. Uh, ready your ears. I will turn it down as fast as I can.
damn you for making me want a Jaguar now. Yeah. <laughs> Tanya just said, oh, yeah. I want a Jaguar. Oh, I want a Jaguar. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've That's got four games here. Game. Yeah. <laughs> got the games an and no Jaguar. Game. They're about 300 from what I see. From what I see. Get it. Oh, yeah. Look what you did. But don't knock <laughs> over the games. They're not Sweetie, for you. Sweetie, no one wants to see your butt. Come on. <laughs> Oh, don't you knock. Oh. oh. Then there goes the, the camera. Chaos. The chaos okay. cats. Um, Can you grab, or you want me to grab Yes, please. You? I have to read stuff out. Chaos um, cats. So the next question is, can you talk a little bit more about the programming tools and programming language you use for developing Jaguar games and how they've evolved over the years? Um, uh, oh, some other comment I was going to make. Uh, somebody said, oh, I wish I had an Atari age glass with some, be <laughs> some beer in it. I think yes. it was Cafe Man. Don't you? Don't you? Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah, that that game's right up my alley. Mm. Oh my god, that looks unbelievable. Looks so that's, good. You're you love shooters. Yes. I mean, that's, that's that's right in your genre. The right era of shooters. Yeah, not, that you not like. too intense. Like the bullet hells. I thought I liked bullet hells at first, but I don't like bullet hells. You're just dodging bullets. Well, I like bullet I like hells that. as long as you have a fighting chance to dodge. Yeah, and it's yeah. not too overwhelming. It's not. Yeah. Um, Serrano J says, way back, the original dev kit was entirely based on DOS applications that will not run under modern operating systems. In recent years, MAC, Mad Mac, the original uh, assembler, and ALN, the linker tools, have been completely overhauled by very talented people, Seamus and GGN, to run on modern systems and include many new features. All my games are written in assembly using my own library, which has been released for people uh, to use as the Raptor API. I've also recently worked with Sporadic, uh, Astro, Astro Storm, Nitrous Crumbs, and Clint Thompson to release Jag Studio, which uh, allows development of games to be developed in BASIC and C. We plan to continually update and support Jag Studio so it will be an evolving tool chain. We hope to see many new and fun games for people using it, and that's very important to have ease of entry so that people can develop these games. And I mean, look at what Batari BASIC has done uh, for people getting into 2600 um, and you get just people who have never programmed before be able to make games and some of the games that it can be made with it are so advanced you'd swear they did it in assembly hmm. um, sporadic says on the jaguar i've mostly been using raptor basic plus which has was an amazingly fast framework created by ggn it used BCX Basic and compiled down to C and then Assembler. I utilized the Raptor API created by Lawrence as the backend framework. RB Plus has now been superseded by JAG Studio. I don't know any of these terms. <laughs> Thank you for following. Uh, goats, goats Pirate. Goats Pirate. Goats pirate. Uh, sounds like Ghost Pirate, but it's actually Goats. <laughs> RB Plus has now been superseded by JAG Studio. Lawrence, myself, and Clint Thompson completed that a few months ago, JAG Studio is an evolution of the initial RB Plus framework and now uses Raptor API 2.0 and includes C as well as basic languages with new functions for the end user. We plan on maintaining, maintaining JAG Studio and adding new function as required. There's already a big update in the works. And I'll do one more uh, question. It's a quick one. How do you find uh, that the Jaguar's homebrew community and scene has changed and grown throughout the time you've been involved? And how do you find the state of it currently? Sporadic says, there's certainly been more and more things released uh, since Reboot provided us all with their various great tool sets. You also have the awesome U235 sound engine created by Linkovic. All of this is helping to lay the foundation for many releases to come. Generally, people are happy to collaborate or help each other when needed. So it sounds like there might be a an upswing in a number of Jaguar games if there's uh, some great tools for people to use. Mm. Um, so now we are going to, actually before we get into that, you haven't shown there's strike. another mm? video to show just before this one. Okay, before So I probably one. want to show this one first. Okay. Um, are there any other titles that you're working on right now for the Jaguar, and are there any other projected release dates? Um, I'm currently working on Gravatic Mines. Gravitic? Gravitic? Gravatic? What is it? What is it? Say? How would you say that? Gravitic? Gravitic. Because it's gravity, so Gravitic. Gravitic yeah. Mines. Gravitic Mines with Ander Lex. The game is a gravity puzzler arcade game that resembles a uh, reminiscent of Thrust and OIDS. We're currently entering beta testing after 26 months of working on this. 
and hope it'll be ready for release around the end of the year if all things go well. There are several other things in the pipeline, but I currently cannot say anything about those. So stay tuned uh, to the Atari Jaguar forum. So we're going to get a little look at the gra uh, Gravitic Mines. Gravitic? Yes. And then we'll get into the last uh, game. Mm. So hold your ears steady. Hi, Atari. Are you going to prevent me from clicking the button? amazing um, so pretty good I'm for a work in progress i'm excited i i want a jaguar now <laughs> i know we need to start playing jaguar games it's it's not that big actually it's it's very tiny so it i've seen it on a shelf i know what somewhere. it looks like yeah, yeah. we yeah. just uh, sourcing one might be a problem but <laughs> well yeah. next time we go to a, a retro expo yes i'm so excited prices are cheaper than you can go actually go to a retro expo oh i know i know so hey, atari yes atari wants one too yes yeah. so He's last strike oh it's a heavy box so let's unbox the last Jaguar box. Nice. So beautiful cover. Last strike. And I, this is a shooter. Two shooters. I have to get a Jaguar now. Oh yeah. my God. <laughs> and a bunch of awesome mini games. Yes. <laughs> How can I not? So here is the cartridge. Oh, it's a clear cartridge. <gasps> oh, it's fancy. Or just... oh, it's really fancy. Very nice. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Oh my goodness. Really, really nice. And, and the back. Show the back. On the back, <gasps> it's got. It says Atari. What does it say? It's hard. It's hard to. You can see the board in it. I oh, love... there we go. It's focused now. You know, I had that clear phone <laughs> with all the internal components when oh, I was a teenager. Like a landline. It was a landline phone, but it was all clear, and you could see all the boards on the inside. And it was they were all bright colors, right? So you could see uh, the inner workings. Loved it, and that's what that reminds me of. That's amazing. And here's the manual. I think that went down a bit when it fell on the floor, cat. <laughs> there we go. There, that's better. There's the last strike manual. Let's see if we can find a nice page. No, not how to use the controls. There we go. There's all the different uh, weapon power-ups. Oh, very cool. 
Twin extra shot, life, rear shot, life. shield, extra life, speed up, uh, mega bomb. Very, very nice manual. Mm -hmm. And if that wasn't enough, you get a soundtrack. Mm. Last Strike original soundtrack. Look at that. And it's sealed. But uh, we will probably be hearing some of this music in the trailer we're in about trailer to play. Video. Yeah, look at that. Gorgeous. So you get a lot of bonuses mm -hmm. with this game, especially this clear cart. Oh my God. Love that. Very 90s aesthetic. Is that what you're yes, referring to? Yes, I love it. To? I love it. I love the clear. <laughs> I, I, I just, yeah, that's very cool. Awesome. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the gameplay. Will copies of Last Strike have clear, will all copies of Last Strike have uh, clear carts? Clear and red carts are an option, uh, Al says. Wow. Uh, by default, you would get the dark gray cartridge. Oh, so there's three options then. So oh, wow. The so original default dark is gray, dark gray, and then you can get clear red or clear. Clear or red, yeah. So you have a lot of, uh, a lot of choices wow, there. So beautiful. It's really beautiful. So I, I like the clear a lot, I have Here to say. is the trailer for Last Strike, which I'm sure I'm going to be blown away by and want to play it immediately. <laughs> Down with a sundown massive, make some
down with a sundown massive. Make some noise! Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Now I'm, we're, we're getting our Jaguar. <laughs> <laughs> Reboot and Atari Age we're... have convinced me to get a Jaguar. <laughs> There's, we have to get a, a Jaguar. <laughs> yeah, it's un, unbelievable. Yeah. Um, this yeah. is exactly right up my alley. It's it's that close to being a cute em up. Some oh. of the levels are are like that, where it's yes. you're in the Mario world. Almost. Almost. The the enemies aren't cute, but um, but it seems like every level very... is a different genre, almost. Yeah. Of 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 and that's shooter that's super awesome that's really cool yeah so that's amazing the you wow. don't have the repetitiveness of oh you're always in space it's like, yes no you're moving horizontally you're moving, moving vertically yeah it's uh yeah just unbelievable yeah fantasy zone is a mm. it's definitely a cute one but uh yeah i love the settings of the different places that it it goes to that's that's awesome yeah we're getting the jaguar we'll find room <laughs> We'll find, like literally, my room is full, full of consoles. <laughs> that 5200's fault. We'll just have yeah, to get, the 5, toss the 5200. Yeah, the 5200 will get tossed for the Jaguar, I guess. <laughs> no, I no, no, no. Two Jaguars will fit in the space for the 5200. Um, <laughs> so, uh, continuing on with the question, uh, any other titles you're working on right now? Sporadic answered, I'm currently working on two games. Nitrous is a fast-paced driving game, borrowing elements from OutRun, Lotus, and other similar games. It features classic branched road layout where you could choose the route uh to get one of the multiple endings it has obstacles and jumps to providing more entertainment more entertaining driving along the way i've been working on this game for five years now not constantly mm -hmm. it's evolved more than i can describe i made a video showing uh the evolution a year ago which you can view online uh it's still going under uh, various changes and improvements one of which i'm hoping to reveal soon Crumbs is the other game I'm working on and is very close to entering testing phase. It's a Pac-Man style game, but from a first person 3D perspective. It features multiple houses, maze, with each with four floors. The floors represent the difficulty levels for each house. There's a radar to help show where the ghosts are and also a heartbeat sound that increases speed when they get closer. Mm -hmm. I've, I've, I've played a couple games like that yeah where it's like oh you can sense the enemies getting close yeah and skeleton is one like that on the 2600 mm -hmm. it also features a few power-ups to help you along your journey i'd love to get crumbs released this year but fortunately this year seems to be going by faster by the day we'll get there eventually <sighs> yeah um whenever i thought of uh jaguar i always thought oh first gen 3d games and i always steer none of these games are like that no none of them none of them this is like peak 2d mm. <laughs> like i love peak 2d mm -hmm. where the sprite uh design is so good and so intricate with so much color yeah that that is where my my 2d well, consoles end and then there's like a two generation gap where there's first and second gen 3d then i pick it up again again when they get the the camera controls under control but they remind me of like ios games and cell phone games yeah. because they tend not to be so intricate in their um graphics mm. and they remind me of that era of game when you said atari age day you meant it we mean it <laughs> what time is it eight o'clock oh my god is it really it's still sunny outside that's crazy yeah yeah more entertainment for you guys <laughs> that's fine it's gonna be a big upload <laughs> oh my god yeah <laughs> Uh, and the last question, thank you so Holy much for crap. being part of Atari Age Day. And if you have anything else you'd like to say that haven't been covered, please go ahead. Uh, Serrano J says, thanks for the invite. I'd like to add, a lot of people have, been, have preconceived mo notions about the Jaguar. Uh, give it a spin. It has really active development scene, and there's a lot of fun to be had with the system. Well, we might Honest. have to expand out to the Jaguar. <laughs> yep. Uh, Sporadic says, I look forward to getting my new games out oh. there for people to enjoy. It's always great to hear feedback from someone who spent the time to play this thing you've been working on for however long. I'm still collecting for the Jaguar myself, uh, too, and with new titles appearing every year, it's a great time to be a fan. And it does look like a great time to be a fan in the homebrew scene, mm. for sure, with these kind of quality titles coming Amazing. out. Amazing. Yeah. I mean, yeah. if you can show some homebrew games to me and and convince me to buy a 300 dollars system based on uh four yeah. games i think you have succeeded yeah that's for sure do you have the plastic bag yeah um and the next 
game, we're going to go... To... Should we have two more, right? Yes. We're almost there, people. Hang almost. in tight. We're almost there. <laughs> Cafe Man said, I was already tired when I started at 3 p.m. Eastern time. I feel like you need a snack. Are you okay? I'm fine. You're... <laughs> we only have like a half hour to go. Okay. We're good. I'm just making sure. I'm a little concerned because it's... We've been going since noon, and it's eight. Uh, eight hours. But we had lunch hours right at the beginning. It's like a I very know. late dinner. I I've been drinking right beer, so... Lots of calories in that. I don't even care anymore, but that's yeah. okay. I don't even care anymore. I don't even care anymore. <laughs> um, so if you can get out Hugo Hunt. Yes. We're going to take a look at that. And uh, then we'll be playing a pre-recorded video in which I will have some food. Okay, good. Yes. Good. Is it 2600 game? Yes, it is. Hey, um, hey, get it over here. Too much beer for you. <laughs> I'm going to have more beer. Okay. Um, what food do you want? Um, I, the the video's uh, like 10 minutes, so it's okay. 10 minutes? Yeah. Wow. Um, so here is Hugo Hunt. Uh, Tanny and I did play this uh, on the show. It is a super fun game. It is like the perfect mix between strategy and puzzle at first it starts off as, as a puzzle game but then uh, not strategy and puzzle action action and puzzle it starts off as a puzzle game and then they throw in some action because you no longer have time to think about what you're doing because there's these ghosts chasing you on the screen you remember this game yes Here's the manual. Beautiful. Very, very nice. We very recently played this, yeah. Uh, fairly recently, yes. Um, and there's some screenshots and some scoring. There we go. And some credits. Ah! Knocked it down. So, original concept by Stefan Dorn, Dorndoff and uh, ported to the Atari 2600 in 2017 by Agilesoft. So, it is a port. And um, it was nominated for Best Homebrew and Best Homebrew Under 4K. Mm. Um, and we're going to play uh, a video uh, from Jens. 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 <laughs> slash Angel, Angelsoft. Mm. Um, so here we go. Enjoy. We'll be back. Hello, I'm Jens. I came across Hugo Hunt when Stefan showed me this game. It was when we talked about the 8-bit programming we did in the 80s. And while I was busy coding some games on the Commodore computers, uh, Stefan did a lot of programming for the Atari machines. Hugo Hunt uh, is also known as Hugo Jagd, which is German for Hugo Hunt. And it was a basic and machine code game to be typed in from a magazine. But I think it's better to let Stefan himself explain the details about this game and its origin. Hello, I'm Stefan Dorno, the creator of the original Jugend game on the Atari 800XL called Hugo Hunt XL, or its German title, Hugo Jagd XL. At first I'll tell you a bit about the history of the game. My first home computer was an Atari 400 bought in 1982 and a few years later an Atari 800 XL with 64 kilobytes RAM followed. In the years 1982 to 1984, I programmed lots of little games in Atari BASIC and later I wrote some system software, like a new operating system for the Atari. In 1984, one of my Atari 8-bit friends began to program a labyrinth game with spinning doors. So I got the idea to make a labyrinth game myself, since I wanted to use Atari BASIC, which is a rather slow programming language, but faster than the C64 BASIC. The main game loop has to be simple to make the game not too slow. 
Thus, I used the large character graphics modes on the Atari 800XL with 20 characters per row and redefined some characters to make the labyrinth walls and items. This is level 1 of the original Hugo Hunt game, with the redefined characters making the labyrinth. It shows also the use of the so-called display list of the antique special chip in the Atari home computers, which allows to mix several graphics and character modes without using interrupts. But since this story is about the 2600 game, I will show you screensets of the 2600 Yuga Hunt game in the following. Here's level 1 of it. The goal of each Labyrinth level is to move Hugo, a smiley in the lower right corner of the screen, to the exit, which is displayed as a large circle. In level 1, it is at the upper left corner. So the game loop does only need to check the joystick and move Hugo in the appropriate direction if possible. To make the game more challenging, I added lots of different items. First, I took some items from other Labyrinth games, like the Super Pill, a dotted diamond from Pac-Man. If Hugo takes this, he can kill exactly one of the monsters in the Labyrinth. Further, there are lots of energy pills, short lines, which replenish the energy amount of Hugo, see the bar at the bottom of the screen. Energy is needed to move Hugo. The energy pills came from a not so well known Labyrinth game called Snapper from which I took also the idea to multiply the earned points with a level number. More items are the key, which can open all doors, displayed as key holes, and numbers which must be taken in ascending order. But the most interesting item, appearing from level 4 on, is the Hugo Swapper, a solid diamond, which swaps the Hugo's position with the other immobile Hugo in the labyrinth. This makes levels rather difficult and hard to plan. A list of all items is on page 4 of the Huan manual. So as a result of all these items, Huan turned into the puzzle game. But adding a ghost in some levels, which can go through the walls, puts some time pressure on the player. Fortunately, Atari Basic is fast enough for handling this ghost in the main loop also. The original game for the Atari 800XL has only 9 levels, which are rather complex and have some more items like teleporters and light switches. Jens ported it to some Commodore systems like C16 Plus 4 and C64 and added a level designer. For the 2600, the labyrinth walls must be symmetric due to the timing limits. So we created new levels. There are two sets with seven levels each. I designed five of the levels in the second part of the game with lots of US weapons and Jens all the others. So enjoy this puzzle game with 14 levels on your Atari 2600. Okay, what can be said about the development process? Well, first of all, it wasn't the first port. In the beginning, I ported Hugo Hunt to the Commodore C16 and Plus 4 machines. Um, these computers um, should replace the VIC-20 in the 80s. But um, they didn't have any hardware sprites like the C64, so um, they didn't sell very well in the end. And um, there were just some very few sellings in uh, Europe, in, uh, in Hungary and in Germany, uh, where there are still some quite active communities which do some coding and stuff for the machines. And um, well, at that time I was uh, experimenting with software sprites. I, uh, programmed a little frogger-like game, which is called the Frog, uh, where the frog is a software sprite that can move through the area. 
And so I had a little experience uh, with the coding software as well. So I thought I could, um, I could try to port you hardware. Actually, the ghost is the the only um, sprite which can move um, randomly through the maze. Um, and so I ported you uh, to to the C sixteen machines um, or plus four, uh, but it just uses sixteen uh, k of memory, so um, it works on the uh, C sixteen and C one hundred sixteen. And uh, well, I added um, a level editor so one can uh, create new levels beside those nine ones that Stefan initially um, created for, for his original version. After that, I ported uh, this version to the C64. This was easy because these machines are quite similar. And um, and uh, you could use the hardware sprites, which is easy. Yeah, and then I came across the VCS. Um, it was actually because um, Stefan told interesting story about that machine. Um, he always said, oh, you know, it's got just 20 bits of display memory and it's got just two sprites. Yeah, but you can play all the arcade games on that machine, yeah, all those famous arcade games. Um, but when you uh, program for that machine, then you have to count machine cycles. Um, and so, um, so I was interested in had a look at that, and, and yeah, it was different. Yeah? I was not used to count machine cycles. Well, at least not to that extent. So um, uh, it, it took it quite a time to get uh, acquainted to that machine. And it tried the um, um, first implementation of, um, of a game I, I programmed in the 80s, which is called the Pilot X. Um, you've got a spaceship and you have to go through a dangerous cavern system. And I uh, thought maybe we can try to port it to the VCS. Well, on uh, Zero Page Homebrew, you had a look at that game. And um, so I thought, well, I could try to port Hugo Hunt um, to the VCS. But there were some difficulties, uh, some problems one had to, um, to solve. Um, first, there were actually too many items on a line when you um, imagine the, the maze and there is um, hugo and there is the ghost and there are several obstacles which all can appear on one line um, but with the two sprites you just can <clears throat> manage to to um, position just two two objects on a line and uh, if you get to position some more then you have to use uh, interlacing uh, so uh, interlacing means that um, in one frame, in this case, uh, Hugo and the ghost are displayed. In the other frame, uh, the obstacles are displayed, which leads to some kind of flicker on the screen. But I had no other idea how to, um, how to circumvent that problem. So it's actually an interlacing technique used there. And um, the other thing is that I had not enough time to uh, provide a full play field. Um, so actually I had to use the mirrored play field. So you just have to um, plot uh, the first half of the, of the play field and the second half will be mirrored automatically. And uh, so we had to create new mazes. Of uh, course, the original ones, they weren't symmetrical. And, um, well, Stefan did most of this. He created several new, um, mazes for the, for the VCS. And, uh, so, uh, well, it's interesting. You can, um, if you, um, 
use um, obstacles in a certain way. You can uh, create mazes uh, which do not look um, like mirrored ones. Yeah, it's interesting. Have a look. Okay, yeah, then um, uh, I get some information about F8 bank switching to um, get the chance to increase the number of uh, mazes which are displayed in the game. In the 4K version, you can have only seven mazes and uh, to have some more. I used the F8 bank switching and could uh, um, implement 14 levels in the game. Well, coding for F8 bank switching is not that difficult, but um, in order to test this on real hardware, I had to sell the um, cartridge of my own with a, with a chip, a memory chip on this, which uh, uh, memorizes the, the, the bank, the current bank you are uh, you're accessing uh, the memory on. Um, well, that's most of the interesting um, issues when developing Yugaan for VCS. But in the end, it all worked. Yeah, um, Yugaan is available. Um, so maybe you want to have a try. So have fun and good luck. Well, I would like to thank all who helped in developing the game. First of all, Thank you very much, Stefan, for creating the new mazes and for doing so much testing. And uh, thanks for all the hints I got from the Atari H forum, especially from Thomas Jensch, who gave me valuable advice on scanline numbers and um, how to enlarge the memory from 4K to 8K, so we can have uh, 14 mazes in Hugoland now. And finally, thanks to Al and his crew, uh, who did a good job in creating cover box for the cartridge. Well, there's a little story about the cover image of the cartridge box. Um, well, I don't know if you can remember all those cover artworks of the games, um, especially for the Atari VCS uh, machines, or even more for the Atari 400 or 800 machines. Um, uh, there were nice drawings and paintings on those boxes and um, were very fascinating. When you look at that, you s it seems you were drawn into a different world, and maybe into space where you were a pilot of a spacecraft and all that stuff. It was fascinating, yeah. Uh, well, actually, um, the graphics of the games uh, were by far not as good as these paintings, uh, but anyways. So when I thought about uh, cover for, for Hugo Hunt, uh, I thought I could exaggerate a bit and um, have a three-dimensional image, um, um, but it still should mention the, the pixel aspect of the game. Uh, so I used the Lego Digital Designer, uh, put some bricks together and uh, took a screenshot of the scene and stored it on my hard drive. Later on I sent it to L and then he asked me for an image with higher resolution. Uh, so I searched for the LED source file um, but it seemed uh, it didn't survive the OS upgrade of my PC because I couldn't find it anywhere on my hard disk. And so we had to use the original screenshot um, well, I hope it will be sufficient. Well, um, if one can see the pixels, then you know it's because it stems from the 80s. Hello, I'm Jens. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Sorry, it repeated. Must have had that option on. I think one of the Jaguar videos repeated as well. So thank you, uh, Jens, uh, for the video, sending that in. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, we didn't play it, but you saw a lot of uh, video gameplay in there mm -hmm. as well. Uh, of Hugo Hunt. Um, the very last game of the night now <laughs> um, is... is the night, yes. Uh, Ninja Sky in Lowers World. Ah, don't open it up. Oh, I want to. <laughs> 
Um, made by Vladimir Zuniga, VHZC. This was nominated for Best Homebrew, Best Graphics, Best Music and Sound, and Best Packaging. Um, and it's not surprising. VHZC's games are just unbelievable. And um, obviously we've dedicated so many hours to playing his games on the show. Mm. Um, so he does everything. He's a one-man band. He is. He does everything you see, hear, read in this package is he, his. But I, I just want to say he's credited for a lot of the graphics on games on on the um, uh, in the box art. He mm -hmm. does a lot of box art and things yep. like that too. Yeah, he does. Yeah, in one of the other ones he did uh, box art for. Yes. Which one was it? I can't remember. Now. I I don't recall off the top of my head, but. Um, was it Cannon? Oh, Cannonball Clash, yes. Cannon Head Clash, yeah. Cannonball? Cannon Head. Cannon Head? Yes. Uh-oh. There is, uh, <laughs> is, is amazing artwork there. Mm-hmm. Ninja Sky. Oh, doesn't say Low Res World on the cart. But maybe it does here. Ninja no, Sky. it's just Ninja Sky. I love it. There we go. Beautiful. Yeah. Um, and it's made kind of like a comic. He's, so he's uh, styled it with uh, like the Atari age in the top left, uh, top right corner, just like if it was a, a Marvel, Marvel or DC comic with the stamp there, as if there would be a UPC code if it's uh, sold in a, a, sh a shopping like store. Yeah. Uh, that's great. So it's made out Fantastic. to be like a comic. Oh, and it, and it just looks like a comic. Look at this gorgeous, gorgeousness inside. He's such an amazing artist. Do we have to switch something back? Uh, I don't think so. Or, oh, I do, maybe. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so it's got his lightning bolts in there. It's got his skull in there. Oh, it's so fun. The, uh, the booklet here. That's just wonderful. Um, there we go. And here's the credits on the back. And it says, special thanks to Zero Page Homebrew and the testers from the Atari Age forums. Well, Lovely. thank you, VH. That's, see, that is so nice. All just... programming sounds, graphic label, and manual by VH. Yes. yes. I yes. just wanted to say we've been um, playing all our games on this beautiful Ed Ladin controller. Oh, I love it. It's so good. Uh, but which I, is I, amazing. I, I have Absolutely to, amazing. We, so I, have I to just say, wanted to give credit to that because we've yes. been playing it, and this is an amazing controller. It is. I, and I, I've been bagging on the monster controller, <laughs> and <laughs> I think I fixed it. Oh, good. Um, but we'll go over that in uh, an episode. Of, of the next episode. episode. Yeah. But because this Ed Ladin controller, it. we've been using a fair amount. Oh, it's so and nice. And it's solid and heavy and has really good control. Um, really wide throw, I guess. It does have a wide throw. Yeah. But that's good. I, yep. I actually think that's good for most games. So Go for it. Nice. Can we hear it? No. The audio is plugged into the wrong thing. Oh, no. Let me switch the audio. Okay. They can see it. They just can't hear it yet. Fair enough. Fair enough. This looks subtly different than what we were playing before. He may have done some alterations. He likes to change up his artwork. Those candles were not candles. Nope. They <laughs> look different. They were fire before. Yep, they were fire. There is some subtle differences here. Because we actually played this. Very recently. Really recently. VH that C. <laughs> Jeez, man. Bunk. Yeah, this I can just change the colors of that uh, thing apple. going around. Uh, the apple, is, uh, we saw that in the uh, news. It wasn't an apple. Right. Oh, crap. I'm pretty sure it was. Oh, you died so early. I know. Is it clear new? Don't recall that. Uh, I'm pretty sure it is. Uh, not new. Not new. It was there when we played it uh, on the most publicly released one. Maybe it's a different color. It's so hard. <laughs> Kitty. This looks very different, actually. Hi, kitty. Those are rocks. <gasps> oh, right? Yes. When we play. He changes things a lot. No, no, you can stay. You can stay. I'm just moving papers. 
Moving papers. I, I don't suggest drinking strong oh, Belgian ale doing. at the same time. Ah, I no, I didn't mean to do it. You're oh, doing. God. I'm not going to lie. Like I said, I don't suggest drink, drinking strong Belgian ale and playing. Yes, the counter graphic is spinning around. Um, unfortunately, um, VHZC did not send oh uh, his writing right up in time for the uh, show. Um, so we're just going to rant. Not rant. We're just going to rave <laughs> about his amazing game. There you go. You're safe. It's terrible. I'm doing terrible. Um, VHZC, VHZC is probably uh, busy working on a game. <laughs> Too, wor too busy working on a game to send in the text um, because he is a powerhouse he of is. game making on the Insane. 2600 and 7800. Is the volume loud enough? Uh, yeah, I can turn it up a little bit. Oh. Yeah, there we go. This is brutal. I'm doing brutal. That's okay. Not If, if, <laughs> you, if people want to see <laughs> us see us play the game all the way through, we've done it before. We have done it before and we've done better. So. Yes, that's okay. Um... So VHZC, um, oh, Lord. actually it might help. More relaxed, less tense, better play. Mm, not right now. No. You got a lot better score last time. You oh, played. much better. <laughs> <laughs> so it's about the balance of beer. It is. It's so true. A little bit? It's not the beer. In your favor. Too it's much? Not the in lack your favor. of food is oh, the problem right now. I see. The small amount of beer plus zero food. Zero food equals is... Equals lots of bad plank. Mm. <laughs> My timing is a little off, unfortunately. Uh, so this is gorgeous start to finish. Um, the box is amazing. I like on the back it says, One player! And it exclaims it. It's like, yes, one player. Platform action! game program for the Atari 2600. Ninja Sky, you don't know how, you don't know why, all you know is you are in the depths of a strange facility. His 2600 color might need some adjustment on the 2600 side of the 7800. Oh, my colors. Oh, maybe that's why. Because I know there are some things that are different, but the colors might be a bit off. I have not done any color adjustments to the 2600 or the 7800. Oh, jeez. But yeah, some of the graphics definitely are different. Oh, God. Oh, Spiceware, you're out of steam. But we're almost done. We're like five minutes away because we are about to do the last draw at uh, the last contest oh, of good. the night. You should do it right now because so where are the cartridges? my gameplay is pretty awful. You're about to die? I died. Oh, okay. <laughs> Back to the beginning. I've, I've started over. Um, so where are the cartridges on the table? Uh, they're here. Oh. They're here. Okay. okay. Can you block one off? Yeah. Here. This is going to be tough. This, I think, is going to be quite tough. Poor. Yep. yep. Uh, this is going to be really tough. Because it could be a lot of things. Okay. So, uh, this is for all of the, uh, all of the prizes. With this giveaway... Um, it is a $50 gift certificate to the Atari Age Store, plus an Atari Age pint glass, yeah. plus an Atari Age metal sign that uh, Al showed at the beginning of the show. Ah, I've seen it. Um, hopefully that wasn't too bad. Okay. It is. Not that specific. No, this one is beer. We'd have to wash it. Not that specific. <laughs> one. Um, one like it. There are many like this, but this oh, one is mine. Oh, this is so uh, bad. So, beer is not included. You will have to supply your own beer. It is not a text label cartridge. There are graphics on it, because I was not about to do that. Okay. The graphic on this, it is set in space. It's not gopher. Um, there is a spaceship on the cover. Uh, all games. There, the spaceship is blue. Um, there is another spaceship 
as well on the cover. A different looking spaceship. The other spaceship looks more like a UFO and the bigger one looks more like an Earth spaceship. Uh, is there a, oh, there's a third spaceship, actually. The third spaceship is also a UFO. Nobody's got it yet. Ooh, this one's good. It's hard. Um, what else I'm, can I'm I looking say at about the... this? Okay. I don't uh... want to say this. This thing because that'll give it away that I'll, I'll hold off for that um i don't want to say those things there who, there what, are items floating it? in space who no that it? it'll give it away would it they'll get it in one second if i say well that. that's fine i'm trying to tease it out a bit are you watching the chat yeah i'm watching it nobody's okay, come good. close um there are things floating away from the main spaceship uh one of them is being captured by one of the spaceships. The audio cut out. Check, 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 check. No, still good. Um, remember, this is not a homebrew. This is an original. Oh, briefly. Okay. This is a home. This is an original run. Um, it, it came out in 1983. It's not Galagon. It's not a homebrew. It's not Oyster on. It's not a homebrew. Um, what else can I say? Ooh. The game... The name of the game starts with the letter A. That's probably going to give it away too much. <laughs> uh, it uses... Oh! Spiceware! Oh, Spiceware got it! Got it. I was just about to say it uses an unusual control pad. Or a controller. Unusual controller, not the joystick. Um, Alphabet with Ernie. That... We, we got... Uh, Spiceware, yeah, wow! <laughs> I thought you were leaving, uh, Al says. He stayed for guessing. So congratulations <laughs> to Spiceware. Spiceware. It is Alpha Beam with Ernie from the Children's CCW. What is that? Children's Workshop. Something Children's Workshop. I think it's written at the bottom. No, it doesn't say CCW. Sheesh, I've all the <gasps> CCW, as Sir Mary says. Um, yes, so it's uh, copyright The Muppets. Mm -hmm. uh, put out in 1983. There you go. I can't really see it on the small thing. I figure out I could hold out that long. Yeah, I told you there's only a couple minutes left. Um, so congratulations, Spiceware. I'm going to write down your name so I know all the winners so I can pass them on so I can get your details later and pass them on to Al. Beer is not in Pete Tanya's plan. You're doing better this time. Oh, you're full of uh, full of lives now. Yeah. You got some apples. Or apples are our lives. Lives. Oh, yeah. yeah. So it turns into... The turns into that okay so uh spiceware oh gosh yeah no my playing is horrific this one's the last horrific award <laughs> alpha it's not good beam we both need to eat we do <laughs> with ernie we do. so i want to thank everybody all the developers. I want to thank Atari Age, Al, for uh, coming up with it. You can keep playing for a Should little I bit. Should keep playing? Um, actually, no. We'll switch over. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Done. 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 Okay. Um, yeah. I want to thank uh, Al. I want to thank all the developers who uh, participated in this, showing off for their new games. Ninja Sky. Ninja Sky. Um, I want to thank everybody watching um, We've had, for tuning in. We did have a very quick look at our stats and we were shocked by how many people shocked. have been watching us. Absolutely we are shocked. so thankful yeah. that so many people tuned in because it's just awesome. Yeah, yeah. obviously people, you guys liked, wanted to see the new games. You wanted yeah. to see the developers talk about them. Yeah. Um, I love Amazing. talking with developers. Uh, I've done developer spotlights on the show yeah. where we concentrate on just one person for like four, three or four hours. <laughs> but this rapid fire uh, was a lot of fun mm -hmm. and I had to like preemptively cut off 
you know, people, because people. it was like, we're, we're, we don't have enough time. I mean, how, how, <laughs> how much, we're at 8.30 and we predict, so we went two hours over. Yeah. That's why I left um, the non-conference <laughs> people, like yeah, the non-video chat end, people yeah. to the end, because I knew we might stray a bit, not this much. Oh my God. Yeah. About 77 at peak. No. Oh, oh no. It was higher than that. <laughs> way higher. Yeah. 77 on average. Yeah. Uh, way, way, almost. Yeah. Really, really impressive, actually. Really impressive. And, and we're really happy to have people care enough to watch about what we yeah. what we show. And yeah. Al, thank you so much for sending yeah, preparing all, all of these, these games. Yeah, preparing all these games so we could show them off so people get an idea of what is coming out into their hands very shortly. I love seeing people's creativity. I love seeing yes. the art. And on such the a carts variety of art. And the manuals yeah. and the games themselves, which I think. Even things like ports are expressions of the developers' yeah. nostalgia and their childhoods, and but but the creativeness of of original games too um, mm -hmm. just shows that people really love developing for these old systems, yeah. and uh, what they what they connect with too. Like mm -hmm. it, it expresses a lot. And it does. What games they pick. What they port. pick, what they want yeah. to play, and everything is, is just really amazing. So, yeah. And I love just sitting here and playing games for eight hours. <laughs> he talks and yeah, he does the interviews, you. and I'm just like, cool. All right, I get to play uh, play whatever new game Atari. has been released. So it's, yep. it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. really fun. And the cats are really happy. Oh, kids. Look at this cat. Look at this cat. He's very happy. He's like, you're in yeah. your up and about. Yeah. Um, so, so thank fun. you for all the long haulers who stayed all the way through. <laughs> and I, there were some. Yep. Uh, there are some names that have been there Al, from the beginning. Al stuck it out. Oh, Al. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> um, so thanks, uh, people at the end. Dan, ABC, Cafe Man 2D, Pack yeah. Rat VG, Captain Classic, Kitten, please, please. <laughs> Atari Age, come on. Can you, can you grab him? Yeah, I yeah, can't yeah. Scroll. Me, me, me. He's being very cute. Yeah. Bill, uh, what is oh it? Billionaire. GSN, I've never seen that name, and they've been here from the beginning too. Oh, have they? Yes. Gateway Tapshy, Carl yes. G, Ground Trooper. There are a bunch RC of names 70. I haven't seen before, and you've been with us the whole time. So it's just Metal Lunar really 7. awesome. No, really Atari, awesome. Tari doesn't have less fur. He's very. He's maybe because we brushed him like he a day ago. He has more fur. Neo Media, <laughs> uh, 1974. Hi, sweetie. Um, John 624Y. It's Kev73. Toko, sorry if I miss anyone, Arena Foot, Carl G, Carl G, Metal Lunar 7, Fitoko, uh, a lot of the names we Mike see all Soul, the time, Mike Soul, Isposta, Crossbow, Media. Spiceware, Mike Soul, yeah, yeah, a lot of these people we see regularly, yeah, oh, we do shows every Tuesday and Friday, of course, Arena if Foot, if you want to see us uh, play more games, long, long, long form arena foot who's coming up with his um New latest books. installment of his it's the books. newest book yeah. we'll talk more about that yes. next show so yes. we can give it its time yeah uh d martins a uh, lot of names i haven't seen before it's Splendid really awesome Nut. to see people joining it is it's yeah wonderful yeah uh oh phaser cat games thanks for sticking it out i think you stayed for most of it yeah showing off your your yeah. game. Es Ramirez is in there too. Steve, you're always with us. <laughs> yes. And it's awesome. Biggest cheerleader. And you just destroy us in all of the high score challenges. So <laughs> So it's good to have a worthy it, opponent. It's good to have a worthy opponent. Boca Loca. He yeah. is a great cat. He is a great cat, yeah. And uh and uh yeah. And all the developers for hanging in there while we uh talked way yes. too long. Yeah. <laughs> for everyone. <laughs> yes. Star Wars stream the May May the fourth. Should I just put on my Star Wars cartridge? And yeah. <laughs> let, it, let it play. Oh, yes. We do have the Star Wars cartridge. Yes. How to get kicked off of Twitch. No. <laughs> and they would never, YouTube. They would never know because it's playing on an Atari 2600. The sound is good enough. I know. No. We would get it kicked off. You know what? You could that, do it on silent. May the 4th. What day is that? Get the script and do all the voices. Um, it is uh, Tuesday. Tuesday? Oh. So it, it is, is it is made for. You can't just do this little pirate stream of just <laughs> Star Wars on a 2600. No, I don't want to get kicked off Twitch. No. Yeah, damn DMCA. You know what? I'll I'll do it. I'll do it. We'll put it under my name. Hey, we could hang out for another 3.5 hours to beat the previous record for 
<laughs> it would. Ooh, it would. This yeah. is long. Yeah, we did one that was 12 hours long. We did do a 12 hours. I can't believe we've gone on for this long. Eight and three quarters hours. That's so insane. It's, we're done. I think the sun's gone down now. <laughs> so. It has. <laughs> All right. Uh, it was uh, the... Uh, Cafe Man TD. Yeah, Cafe Man TD. The show was for Stellathon. So we're raising money for the development of Stella. Yes. And uh, it was very, very highly successful. And everybody had a good time. And we gave away a lot of great stuff. Mm -hmm. And raised we, a lot of we money. We are going to do it again the moment we can. So. <laughs> yes. Yes. Something like that. Another yes. Another marathon. Another marathon. Yep. We have to do a four-player marathon yes. now that we it's have the, um, what is it? Um, uh, sleeping on Ernie's. The four-person game. games. So. Yep. Lots of four-person games. Okay. So All right. we're leaving. Uh, thank you so much for thank tuning you. in. We're so grateful. Yep. It's wonderful. And, it's been uh, wonderful. Enjoy rest, rest of your night of your night and your weekend and we'll see you next time yes uh tuesday tuesday we'll see you tuesday join I us should, tuesday i should have everything back in order okay <laughs> yes. bye bye bye